There has been more concern or more public concern about hantavirus, given that we've had some cases of infection uh, from um, patients who have uh, been traveling recently in Yosemite Valley. Um, in particular, uh, these cases were thought to be uh, were thought to come from uh, exposure to deer mice uh, while they were staying at Curry Village, um, in, uh, which is at, at the floor at the base of the Yosemite Valley. Hantavirus overall is a very, very rare infection spread by exposure to the urine or droppings of deer mice. And deer mice are wild mice that typically exist in rural, rural areas uh, or at higher elevations. Um, in, uh, in California, they're, they're commonly found in the eastern Sierras. And uh, whereas it may, uh, hantavirus may infect the deer mice, the deer mice do not get sick from the hantavirus. Humans that initially get infected from hantavirus, uh, the incubation period for the disease is about one to five weeks. Um, typically, uh, they begin with uh, very, a flu -like, very vague flu-like symptoms. Uh, this includes fever, fatigue, muscle aches and pains, and sometimes abdominal pain. Um, after the, uh, then the disease can progress, meaning that they'll then develop cough and shortness of breath, and eventually, with hantavirus infection, it, it develops into a life-threatening pneumonia. The disease is very severe and about 38% of patients who get the disease will eventually die from the illness. Humans are not reservoir for hantavirus infection. They can get infected by exposure to deer mice, but they're unable to pass, uh, they do not pass the um, disease from uh, human to human. There's no, there, there, there have been no documented cases of human to human transmission from hantavirus infection. Because the most common route of transmission for hantavirus appears to be inhalation or direct inhalation of contaminated dust from contaminated urine and, um, and secretions, other secretions of the rodent, um, there are some measures that can be taken to prevent infection. Probably the most important uh, general measure is to avoid contact with uh, wild rodents. And this would involve um, uh, this would involve carefully cleaning cabins in the proper way and uh, cleaning cabins uh, to prevent uh, rodents from making, making the uh, living areas in inhospitable to rodents. Um, another thing that can be done would be to keep um, uh, basically all food kind of carefully packaged or wrapped away where it's inaccessible to rodents, um, as well as, um, as, well as uh, potentially taking steps to avoid inhaling or staying away from re regions where you might be able to inhale contaminated dust from rodents. Now because there have been no documented cases of human to human transmission and because it's been thought that hantavirus cannot, is not contagious and cannot be spread from person to person, um, the cases have almost exclusively the outbreaks have been very, very isolated. Therefore, I think that the, the probability that there will actually will be a large scale, wide scale outbreak is, is quite remote. If you're worried about having been potentially exposed to hantavirus, if you've been camping recently, if uh, potentially you've been in musty cabins or uh, campsites or other areas where you may have been exposed to the urine or droppings of rodents or excretions of rodents or you may have inhaled particles, um, it's very, very important that if you develop symptoms that you seek medical attention immediately. And this is because um, it's been shown that the earlier you get medical care, uh, the better the outcomes from the disease and the more likely it is that you'll be able to survive this very dangerous illness.